Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Durbedrosian. I am here at a high moisture corn bunker with Stephanie Jens from Lalamond Nutrition, and we're here today to talk about high moisture corn. I think that this is an especially important topic because this year we're gonna have more high moisture corn than we anticipated because corn was planted late. We also had a wet year, there's an early frost anticipated, and so I think more grain corn is gonna be harvested as high moisture corn. This year inventories are short and so getting high moisture corn right is going to be very important. So we're standing here actually because of the short inventory in front of a three year old high moisture corn bunker. All right, Michelle, what, when we think about high moisture corn harvest, what are the top things that we need to focus on to make sure we ensure the best crop possible? Yeah, so I think the absolute number one most important part of getting high moisture corn right is making sure it is high moisture. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot about low moisture yeah. corn, um, but getting the right moisture content, I aim between 28 and 32% moisture. If it's too dry, we can start to get some massive spoilage problems. Um, and so my next most important thing I would have to say is making sure that we're getting the right inoculant on and at the right rate. And so I always recommend a Buchneri based inoculant such as Lactobacillus Buchneri 40788. Um, and I like that because it makes acetic acid which prevents spoilage. But no matter what, always look for a well-researched inoculant um, with at least a 600,000 CFU per gram minimum label guarantee. If you're going to pay for Buchneri, make sure yep. you're getting your fill of Buchneri. Yep. And one of the questions we often get is, can I use it on whole shell corn just like I use it on ground corn? And we actually have a really good study out of the University of Delaware where we looked at just that and we saw an increase in acetic acid on both types of corn and that led to lower yeast and mold counts overall. So it kept it more stable at time of feed out. So great point. Yeah, we're just trying to limit spoilage here. Um, and I know that this year uh, high moisture corn harvest is going to be a little bit later. And so the temperature of the high moisture corn or the temperature at harvest is going to come into play. What I'm saying is we're going to have a lot of frozen lines. Yeah. And so one way to avoid that is to just take a little propylene glycol. I like to follow this, the keep it simple yes. rule. Take yeah. a little propylene glycol, glug glug into your inoculant mixture, mix mix, and that should take care of it. If it doesn't, go ahead and dump a little bit more and you can go up to 10% of that mixture. So just don't worry about it. The bacteria will be fine with it. They play together great. The nice part is usually everybody has that on hand too. So it's a, it's a really simple fix. So one thing that I think is also important with high moisture corn this year, like I said, because inventories are so short, we're gonna have a lot of people that are going to be going into new crop a little bit early. And that means that we'll have a shortage of soluble starch. And so a lot of people should be focusing on grinding and processing of this high moisture corn. That's also going to help with packing density. Um, once you've ground it much better, you get a better packing density, which is another way to prevent spoilage.